How's it going guys? It's Golazio here. Welcome back to another FIFA 21 career mode tutorial. Today guys, I'm going to be giving you the perfect tips to actually start a career mode. So this is kind of my advice on where if you kick starting your career mode right now and you're like, right, I don't want to be fired because being fired is quite frequent now compared to other years. So we don't want that to happen and I got some tips for you to actually nail that. But guys, make sure you do hit that like button of course if you are new around here and you are yet to subscribe. Make sure you do hit that subscribe button. But anyway, let's get into that first tip. So tip number one, which has kind of been my 101 uh, tip in all fairness, is understanding your objectives. I never realized the importance of this until last year. So when you're actually understanding the objectives, what I mean by that is not necessarily completing every single objective that you have, is actually prioritizing them. So you might meet certain objectives and you think, oh, okay, we're doing well, but doesn't actually hold much value in your career mode. So if, for example, you have signed a new striker, reach, champ reach Champions League football, you probably want to try and weigh those up and figure out what's actually best. If you just don't sign a new striker, you're probably not going to reach Champions League football. But if you, re if you sign a new striker, you might reach Champions League football. But if you don't reach it, it doesn't mean so much. So that kind of goes through, for example, with like the reducing of the wage, the ticket sales and stuff. So make sure you prioritize and actually understand your objectives. It allows you to actually enjoy your career mode a little bit more because you can prioritize certain areas. Okay, so coming in next, guys, is actually sorting out your team, finding your weak links, and actually sorting that spine to your side. So what I mean by this is your goalkeeper, your center back, a midfielder, and a striker. Whether you actually sign players in these positions, but it's actually understanding whether you actually need to sign in those positions. So figure out what's actually the weak links. Okay, we got loads of midfielders. Don't need half them. Let's sell them. But let's add a brand new centre back to make a more of a spine to our side. What tends to happen when you make a call to your side, it actually brings a really strong side together in comparison to actually signing player out on the right, maybe one left back, uh, maybe only bringing a goalkeeper. You want to sort out the middle of your side and have a really strong team to have a successful career. One for this year is actually managing your training schedule. This is actually substantially important this year. So this year, if you don't actually manage your training correctly, you are going to be down in the dumps with your sharpness in your players. One thing I've actually noticed, if you're training the day before or even the second day before, you are more likely to actually have not much sharp players. So take consideration on how you actually manage this and where when you actually train your first team to your second team to your third team. Take that in consideration. Guys, I'm actually going to have a tutorial up very soon on actually how to manage this correctly. So make sure you do hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe because you don't want to miss that video. For you guys, it's actually creating multiple squads. This benefited me so much last year and it's benefiting me again this year. Well, this obviously doesn't really happen right at the start, but it's really good to have. So if you are considering investing in youth, you can make a youth team. If you want to invest in a second string side or you're investing in your first team, you want to make sure you have a second team. One of the good things with this, especially when you're in the lower leagues or you become really successful in your career mode, having those multiple squads allows you to actually switch squads per tournament and actually keep players really happy. So one of the things you can do is that I had a Premier League, a champ so this is when I was more successful. The more premium of the squad, like the, the tournament, for example, um, the Premier League, the Champions League, um, or potentially Europa League, like your Europa competition, you prioritise your first team for that. The EFL Cup, the FA Cup potentially, and the occasional Premier League game, you actually use your second string side in comparison. This goes for the same for the lower leagues as well. If you're in League 2, the Czech Trade Trophy, not sure what it's called now, the Carabao Cup, the EFL, that's the EFL Cup, the FA Cup and your league. You've got four tournaments to take in consideration here on what to, five tournaments on what to actually do. So you prioritize the team. So maybe your check a trade trophy um, is your second string side along with the EFL Cup. But the FA Cup and the league, you actually use your first team. So you take so that So like I just mentioned then a few moments ago, is actually investing in your youth. If you actually want to check out the tutorial that I did on where to send your scouts, you can check that out right now. I'm going to put that up in the top corner as well. I'll put it at the end of the video. So don't worry too much right now. But investing in your youth is really important, especially actually from a, a road to glory perspective. From a road to glory perspective, I see it as actually bringing players in that you can sign straight away to your first team and start playing right away. So you're getting free players. 
But from an, a more of an advanced stage, if you are like a Premier League side, this is a really good money spinner. So you sign these players, invest the 20, 30 grand that you do, um, and then you actually sell them for potentially a couple of hundred thousand. So it's really worth investing in your youth side. As well as actually getting a more bang for your buck is actually signing players on a pre-contract. This, of course, is more difficult this year with the new restrictions in place with career mode. But without a doubt, make sure you have a bit of budget left over in your saves for January. Because without a doubt, there's going to be some absolute gems popping up that you can get on a pre-contract ready for season two. All you need to do is actually understand what you're worth as a team. If you're in lead two, you're not going to be bringing in the likes of Ronaldo, Me I know you can't sign Messi really this year, but so on and so forth in your career modes. But you could bring in potentially a League One player, a Championship player on that three. So weigh up your options, realize what you're worth and bring in some players on a pre-contract. But anyway guys, that was a nice, quick, easy tutorial for you guys. The perfect way to actually start a career mode on FIFA 21. Some really good opportunities for you to really take consideration of actually what you need to do to start a career mode in the right way. One of the biggest ones for me this year is that training. You don't want to go into the game without match, fit, match fitness. It is really, really a big factor this year, which I didn't think it would be, but it truly is. Guys, let me know in the comment section below if you have any tips for people in your career modes. What do you do that you think, oh, this is actually really good to consider? Guys, without further ado, make sure you do hit that like button. And of course, if you are new here, make sure you subscribe. And of course, make sure you share with your friends. Let them know you need to start a career mode this way. But anyway, guys, my name is Galazio, and I'll see you guys very soon. Check it out.